Hey everyone, it's Kenji. Uh, we're gonna make ricotta gnocchi. So ricotta gnocchi are one of the, other than spätzle, 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 I'm still gonna get that, I'm gonna get that right someday. Other than spätzle, it's one of the easiest um, homemade pastas you can make. Uh, much easier than potato gnocchi, easier than Parisian gnocchi. Um, it takes about 10 minutes. Um, you'll see, I'll do it in real time right now and I'll kind of talk you through it. So you wanna start by getting a tray like this. You can use a larger tray than this, actually. Normally I do it on a half sheet pan, I just don't happen to have a clean one. This is a, a quarter sheet pan. You wanna line it with some paper towels, either that or a clean, clean kitchen towel. Then you want 12 ounces of ricotta. Um, so this is Bellwether Farms ricotta, this is really good stuff. Um, you don't need like super fancy ricotta, um, but what you do want is ricotta that has no, no gums or stabilizers in it. So when you make ricotta, ricotta is a cheese that's made by um, taking milk, cooking it with an acid, uh, and then skimming it. And uh, well, traditionally it would be whey, not just milk. Um, but this is, ricotta these days is made from fresh milk that you um, curdle with an acid. It could be, you know, it could be natural ferment, naturally fermented, it could be lemon juice, it could be vinegar, um, until it curdles and then you skim that off uh, and you strain the curds. Um, now, good high quality ricotta will have nothing but milk um, either an acid or a starter culture to give it um, to give it acidity uh, and salt and what they do is they drain it for a long time so that it becomes nice and uh, dry and Well, it has that ricotta like texture uh, cheap ricotta on the other hand they will curdle um, but they don't want to they don't want to get rid of all that excess water because water is cheap um, and they can still sell it, they still sell it by the pound. So when you buy cheap ricotta, what they do is they add gelling agents, like, uh, well, gums usually, and the, what those gums do is they help the ricotta retain moisture um, so that they look firmer than they actually are, but usually they have a lot of water content. Those types of ricottas, um, which are sort of your standard supermarket ricottas, they really won't work in a recipe like this. Um, in fact, they won't work in many recipes at all. Um, I would not recommend using them. Uh, so you wanna look for a ricotta that has no gums or stabilizers at all. Um, you want 12 ounces of ricotta to start. You want to press it with paper towels like this to get it dry. And then you can kind of peel those paper towels off. And you're going to kind of get in there with your hands. Some ricottas will stick more than others. This is a particularly sticky one. But basically, like, you're trying to get as much of the... Whoop, as much of the curd back as possible. The one that I use normally is called Calabro. Um, that's, I think, nationally available. Um, I just happen to have this one. This is Bellwether, it's local. Actually, I think I have made it with this before and I remember this same issue, but it's, it's really not a big deal. We're gonna get it all off. And what you should end up with is about eight ounces of actual um, post-blotting ricotta left in the bowl. What do we have? Yep, right, so we have seven and a half ounces. That's about what you should end up with after you've blotted the excess moisture out. Now generally these take sh a shorter amount of time to make these than it does to boil the water. So to that we're gonna add one whole egg plus one egg yolk. Um, when I split my eggs I I do it in my hand like that. Doesn't have to be super precise. One whole egg plus one egg yolk. Then we're gonna add about, uh, about an ounce of microplaned cheese. Let this zero out again. We'll save that for someone else. All right, so one ounce, this is um, uh, Pecorino Romano. You can use Pecorino Romano, you can use Parmesan. Um, you want some kind of sharp, dry grating cheese. And again, with a recipe like this, like there's so few ingredients, you actually do want to spring for the kind of nicer stuff. So don't use like the, um, you know, don't use the stuff in a green can. That stuff is no good. Right, we'll save the rest of this for 
grating onto the end. And then you want to add about three and a half ounces of flour. Oops, and you also want to zip up your fly. One, two, it's two and an eighth, three, three and a half. There we go. Oops, I'm sorry, shovel. All right, now we're gonna take our spatula. Spatula. I'm just gonna mix this up. I'll take my scale away before I start putting pressure on it and uh, before the, the scale police get on my case. There's, a, there's police on the internet for everything, like literally everything. I'm sure there's something I'm doing wrong in this video that someone's going to get on my case about. So you're looking for a pretty moist dough. This looks a little bit too, too loose. I'm just gonna add a little bit more flour. But you don't want to add too much flour because the more flour you add, the sort of more um, dense they're gonna get. And you want to make sure that these ricotta are nice and light and pillowy. Okay, as soon as the dough comes together, you're good. You don't want to really knead it too much. Now we're gonna kind of heavily flour our board. I'm just gonna turn this out. And we can kind of gently pat it into a shape like that. And we get a bench scraper. Where's my bench scraper? There he is. Now we're gonna divide this into four. Okay, and then each one of those, we're gonna then start rolling into like a log. And split it in half. Oops, this guy got a little bit of, there's a kind of layer of raw flour in the middle there. Okay, and then you roll each of those halves into another log, about that, about that wide. This guy had another little seam in him. Over there. How much time are we at so far? Eight minutes. Eight minutes including talking. You know, maybe the first time you do this, it'll take you 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, but should be no reason it'll take you longer than that. really matter if they're um, all perfectly even either. All you want is something that you want there to be sort of an even uh, width, uh, even diameter. It's very easy to make homemade ricotta as well actually. If you have my book, um, The Food Lab, there's a recipe in there for homemade ricotta. Um, these days I, when I'm gonna make homemade ricotta, I find the easiest way is to actually just get some buttermilk. Um, you buy buttermilk and you slowly heat it up in the stovetop while stirring it. Um, with this with the spatula sort of gently stirring it and as soon as the uh, curds start to separate you shut it off heat and leave it to the side um, and then what happens is those curds will as, as you leave it off heat the curds will eventually settle and form a layer on top and then you just strain the whole thing out and you got nice fresh warm ricotta and the more you the more you let it sort of sit in a strainer the um denser that ricotta is going to become um, and the more suitable for a recipe like this it'll become when it's nice and moist, you can kind of eat it fresh. Um, like eat it with a little bit of olive oil. Warm with a little olive oil and lemon zest and cracked pepper and parsley. Um, ricotta is delicious. Or with some fruit. 
So you saw I just sprinkle them with a little toss, sprinkle them with a little bit of flour, and then toss them gently so that they separate. There you go. So you can make ricotta um, in sort of big batches, and then what we'll do is we'll blanch them. That is, we'll um, put them in boiling water. And if you want to make it in large, if you want to make a bunch at a time and have it ready to go, um, you can blanch it um, and then shock it in ice water. Um, and then after you shock it, uh, you can toss it, uh, drain it, toss it with a little oil, and then uh, freeze it. And it freezes great. Um, and then when you're ready to cook it, you just boil it again until it starts floating. So what's happening here, um, you're going to see, they start to, they're going to start off sinking. Uh, and then they're going to start to expand. And the reason they do that is because um, as they heat up, some of the, um, well, the moisture inside, inside starts to convert to steam. Um, and so that makes it less dense. You have sort of a uh, more, more air inside, uh, more space, same mass, but more space. Uh, and that's what makes them eventually lighter than water and they float to the top. If you've ever seen, if you ever watched uh, Mr. Wizard when you were a kid, um, or, or if you've had a kid recently, um, like I do, uh, he does this trick where you can take a medicine dropper, like a, you know, like a little squeezy medicine dropper, and you fill it with just enough water so that um, it barely, barely, barely floats um, when you put it in, um, when you put it in plain water. And you stick that inside a soap container, an empty soap container that you filled with water, and it floats at the top. And then what you can do is you can squeeze the soap container. Um, that creates pressure inside. And since water is not compress compressible, but air is, the air space inside the medicine dropper compresses, gets a little smaller. Um, so more water goes inside. And so eventually the uh, overall density of that entire medicine dropper um, rises to the point where it's denser than the water. And so it sinks. And so it's sort of like a magic little medicine dropper thing. Um, same principles as this. Um, while, that, while that cooks, I'm just going to uh, make a quick, quick tomato sauce. Do a couple cloves of garlic. Pound this up. All right, those guys are almost done. So what I'll do is I'll get my, normally I would actually have my sauce ready, but I don't. So I'm gonna get these guys, stick them in an the ice bath. I'm gonna refer some. That'll do it. Guys are looking good. I'm gonna stick these in a nice bath so that they stop cooking. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful gnocchi. I'm gonna finish up my sauce. Um, this garlic was starting to sprout, has these green bits. You can pick them out if you want. I usually don't mind them. I just go ahead and stick them right in. Um, I think people say they are bitter. I don't really find them to be particularly bitter. All right, very roughly smashed garlic. Now, so this gnocchi, so what I would do now normally is um, once it's chilled down, you drain it. I'm gonna, well, I'll do the draining step anyway. And to show you what it's like. So, chilled. Nice out. I'm gonna drain it here. And then what I would do is put it back in the bowl, toss it with some oil, spread it on a sheet tray, and place that sheet tray straight into the freezer. Um, and then uh, they will, they will finish, uh, They'll freeze, and then you can finish them off later just by putting them back in boiling water. Um, or right now, since I'm not gonna completely freeze them, I'm just gonna finish them straight in the sauce that I'm making. Um, some garlic, just some San Marzano tomatoes. Some 
salt, pepper. I like lots of black pepper in my tomatoes. Let me grab my pasta bowl here. Final thing we'll do is chop up some fresh basil. This is um, this is actually Greek basil from the garden. Um, I got it because all the regular basil is gone from the garden centers. But I, I you know, I don't, I don't, don't think I've ever used this or seen it before. Um, but it's pretty great. Teeny, teeny little leaves, nice and succulent. Um, really, really nice, flavored, really nice aroma to them. I think I might get Greek basil more frequently. Okay, there's that. Put the pasta directly in the sauce. I had a little too much sauce for that pasta, that's all right. My daughter will eat the sauce by the spoonful when we're done. So. Do just a tiny splash of the pasta water. A hotter burner. Finish it with some fresh olive oil. Taste it for salt. You guys, dinner in like two minutes, all right? Mm. Oh, I know which police are gonna get me, the brown garlic police, because I let the garlic, I can taste it. I, can let, I let the garlic brown a little bit in here. And with like a real sort of traditional marinara sauce, simple tomato sauce, you wouldn't let the garlic brown, you would just, uh, Lightly sweat it, but you know what? I don't care. And neither should you. Do it the way you like. Taste those gnocchi. Hmm. Yummy. This plus a salad. Perfection. Um, if you want, you know the gnocchi. You can you can add some herbs in there as you're forming them. You can add some. Uh, black pepper, you can add some uh, lemon zest, you could add nutmeg, and you can add whatever you'd like, in fact. Nobody's gonna stop you. All right, let's shut the heat off on that. Let's add a little more cheese. Lots of cheese. Toss like half the basil with it. Serving spoon for this. Some more cheese. More basil on top. My daughter sounds upset about something. Uh, let's use this. Uh, Nice olive oil to finish. And one more little crack of black pepper. Right. I 
Look at that. I think that was a 20 minute dinner. Twenty minutes from scratch pasta. So you can see, um, nice and light, kind of airy inside. Um, when you eat them, they shouldn't be gummy or doughy at all. Mm. Sit. <laughs> and Hamon, you want one? Here you go, Hamon. <laughs> All right. See you later.